everyone. My name is Deborah, and this is going to be a recap review of the Kirk Franklin dating show. Kirk Franklin and Tammy Franklin called The One. We are on season one, and we are on episode two. And you know what? This episode, Kirk Franklin wanted to say it, but he couldn't say it. Is Kirk Franklin a pastor, or is he just a gospel singer? So um, I know he can't say it because he's holy, holy, holy. But I'm going to say it for him. What he really wanted to ask Brent was... Um, are you a 43 year old F boy? Are you a 43 year old F boy? Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, Kirk Franklin. He is a 43 year old F boy. A Brit out here ain't looking for nothing but a big butt and a smile. He has no depth to him whatsoever. All he is worried about is a big booty and a smile. He was all wondering why this girl Brittany didn't come to this little dinner. You know why? Because she don't want to date no 43 year old man. <laughs> She's 32. You know, people talking about options out here. People out here, men always talking about what options they got. Let me tell you what the options a 32-year-old woman has. She does not have to date a 43-year-old gray-haired man. I don't care how in shape you are. I don't care how good-looking you are. A 32-year-old woman does not have to date a 43-year-old F-boy. Absolutely not. And Brittany says, I'm an RN, which means I make good money. I'm good looking. I got options out here in the world and I don't have to date a 43 year old F boy. A lot of these men, just because they can have babies till they 70 years old, they think they still got all the time in the dating world. No, you don't. No, you don't. You got an expiration date too. Because let me tell you, when I was 32 year old, I didn't want to date no 43 year old man. Y'all were old. Just like Brittany said to him, you look good for 43. <laughs> That's a low key shade. When someone says you look good for your age, what they're telling you is you do look good for your age, but you're still old. <laughs> and he up here wondered what happened. Did she have an emergency? No, the emergency was she didn't want to date no 43 year old F boy. What he think? He thinks he's going to be attractive to every woman for his whole life. No, you got an expiration too uh, out here in the world and yours is running out to Brent. And Kirk Frank, the one to ask him the real question. First, he asked him, hey, what's in your closet? What you looking for? What's your dirty skeletons? And he's, oh, you know, maybe I'm afraid of failure because I've been married before. <laughs> Kirk Frank, like, uh-uh. Kirk Frank says, I know about these streets. I know about these streets. Uh, give it to me. Give it to me real. And finally, he says, well, maybe I'm wondering, can I stick with one woman? There you go. And there isn't a problem. And so if you don't know if you can stick with what one woman, then you don't need to be looking for one. <laughs> Make sure you wear a sign. Make sure you sign a 43-year-old F-boy um, in recovery. And so women know what chance they taken. This girl that came on the show, what was her name? That was the chef, Richie. She talking about, I want to know why he ain't been snapped up because he ain't available to be snapped up. He ain't available. He has not made himself available to be snapped up. That's why he's still out here in the street at 43 years old. 32-year-old women, leave him alone. 32 year old woman like Brittany, she knew better. She said, let me go on over here and give me some extra hours at the hospital and clock me some, clock me some money. I don't need to be wasting my time with no 43 year old F boy. Good for you, Brittany. Good for you. And Richie, the 40 year old chef, she was doing too much. It, Brittany was like, I ain't got time for you old people. <laughs> Brittany up here talking about, oh, I'm glad that she's a nurse. She can deliver our babies. Girl, that was too much. You doing way too much. That was unnecessary. That was on that showed me a little bit about yourself. It showed me a little bit about um, Richie. Didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. Rim was over here talking about maybe she was a little intimidated by Richie because the way Richie speaks, maybe that's why she didn't show up. She was intimidated. No, nah, she wasn't intimidated. She wasn't interested in you. Uh, just like that man, Montavious told Brent, uh, guess what? Men get ghosted too. Thank you, Montavious. Thank you, Montavious, for telling Brent, guess what? Women ghost men too. And Brittany ghosted you. <laughs> it was a good one. I loved it. Because I loved every minute, every minute of it when Brittany ghosted Brent. I loved it. Brent over here talking about he 43, but he want to have three kids. Who are you, Hugh Hefner? Who are you, Hugh Hefner? Don't nobody want no 70-year-old daddy when you only in high school. <laughs> 40, you 43, you ain't even married yet. So by the time you get started, you're going to be 45, 46. That means your kid, when they before they even get out of high school, they're gonna be like, you're gonna be like 60, 70, 70 years old. <laughs> I know there's 70-year-old parents out here going to high school graduations this year. 
I know they are, but it ain't what a kid wants. It is not what a kid wants. A kid don't want the oldest parent in the school. Let's be real. They do not. They do not want the oldest parent in the school. Talking about, is that your grandmother coming to pick you up? People, come on now. But just because I've been on Brent this whole first half, don't think I'm not to be about to get on Ashley because I'm getting on her. I'm about to get on her. So y'all uh, hold on to your wigs, and your weaves, and your bonnets, your whatever else. Because I know you're not going to like what I have to say because I know I bet there's a lot of people out here that like Ashley. I bet there's a lot of people out here who like Ashley. I like Ashley too, but I know why Ashley's single. I absolutely know why Ashley's single. Um, I wouldn't even date Ashley. Ashley's bossy. See, I pick up on little things about people. One thing is Ashley's bossy. She's a little bit too much of a, I don't want to call it masculine because that's not really what it is. Um, is it tomboyish? I don't know if that's what it is either. But it's some energy that comes with her that I'm telling you, most men will put her in the friend zone. She's cute. She got a nice figure. She's smart. She's intelligent. She's a nice girl. All of those things. Cute. Nice figure, intelligent, smart. She seems like a nice person. No real red flags are coming up. But let me tell you what she doesn't give off. She doesn't give off feminine energy. She doesn't give off sweetness. All these are things men like. And let me tell you what else she is. She's bossy. At first, I didn't know where it came from until I saw her mama. <laughs> then I said, oh, this explains it. When I saw that mama walk in, um, I was like, oh, what is this? I'm like, oh, now I don't know where she gets this from. She gets it from her mama. But let me tell you something about Miss Ashley. Ashley walks around talking about she has never felt protected. That's one of the things she told Tammy. Um, and let me, let me go through this a little bit. I like the format of this show. I like the fact that you have Tammy sitting down talking to Ashley one-on-one. And I like the fact that you have Kirk Franklin talking to the man one-on-one. I absolutely love this format. Because I think that Tammy hopefully will be able to help um, Ashley a little bit. She needs to tell her she needs to um, soften it up a little bit. Because uh, Tammy oozes feminine qualities. Ashley doesn't. Kirk Franklin tried to give her a little hint when he came in the house. He said, wait, why isn't there any food cooking? I know it was kind of sexist, kind of old school. But he was trying to hint at it. He was trying to tell her, girl, where are your... Where are your Feminine wiles. I don't see none of it. I don't see none of the stuff that's going to want to make a man come close to you. Ashley, I'm telling you, her behavior, her demeanor, the way she talks, the way she speaks, the things she likes, I'm telling you, will get her in the friend zone with men real quick. They'll like her. It won't be any reason why they won't like her. But what it is, is they won't start to feel that sexual energy with her. She'll be in the friend zone. She might be getting rid of them, them real fast, but guess what? They're going to get rid of her just as fast. They're going to put her in the friend zone. I could tell you that already. But go back to what I was saying. She says she's never felt protective because you know what? Ashley gives off these strong, powerful, independent woman vibes. And I'm telling you, when you give off those strong, independent vibes, men do not feel the need to protect you. They do not feel the need to do things for you. They do not need to feel the need to cater to you because they feel like you got it. You got it. So in one way, when people want other people to step up in their lives, and this isn't just with men, then you have to sit back and you have to wait for the man to step up. You've got to give that space. A lot of people say, I never get help. I never get help. Sometimes it's because you jump in so fast to do the work. You don't allow enough time for a person to help you. And I think when, when it comes to Ashley, I think Ashley is so proactive. She's so on it. She never lets a man protect her. Let me tell you, last episode, I was saying, why is she giving out these handshakes instead of hugs? That was the first thing I told you. Last episode, I said, why is she telling men, let me pour you some wine? Why? Let them pour you some wine. Today, same thing, giving out more handshakes on the, on, on the date. Then she's sitting over here telling them, come on, come sit over here. Stop giving people orders. Stop saying, come sit over here. Listen, Ashley, if you want to sit down, if let's say you're standing up with two men and you're talking and you've decided now that you want to sit down on the couch, you don't tell the man, come on, let's go sit down over here. No, you don't give no man instructions. That's not what you do. What you say is, uh, you say something more like, is it okay if we continue the conversation on the couch? I'd like to have a seat. That's what you say. That's what you say. 
You say, oh, I would love to sit down right now and continue this conversation. Then you let him say, okay, let's go sit over here. That's how you do it. You don't say, let's go sit down over here. Then when they were doing this, a cake baking contest, she's like, let's see who bakes the, be the best cake. All this competitiveness. Men don't want to compete with women. Even this date was a bad date. I talked about the dates last week. Now here's another date. We got Ashley lording over two men with a whistle, talking about give me more, give me more, like she's a freaking Gerald Sargent in the army. Girl, ain't no man going to be with this. No man wants the image of you lording over him and no exercise activities, working out nothing. They want to show you what they got. You too busy over here standing like you in charge, standing over there talking about give me more, drop and give me 50, do it faster. Who's going to win? Who's going who's gonna to be winning? Who's go I love to see men competing for me. No, that's not what it looks like. Sure, there are back in the day, men were gladiators and competed for women. Sure, there are contests when, when, when men competed for women. But you know what them women was doing? Sitting up in the stands, dressed in a nice pretty dress with makeup on and looking real pretty. And the men were down in the gladi gladiator pit uh, fighting for their honor. They weren't, the women weren't sitting down there in stretch pants, workout gear with a whistle, blowing a whistle. That's two different things. This is not oozing sex appeal. This is not oozing. She's a beautiful woman without makeup. She's a very pretty girl. But let me tell you, she's gonna get she either gonna get foot in, she gonna get put in the friend zone or men just aren't gonna be attracted to this. It's way too much strong, domineering energy coming from Ashley. Way too much. And she said she was turned off by Montavious because Montavious wasn't giving uh her enough of him. And she, and, you know, he was monopolizing the conversation. That's because she likes to talk too much. She likes to be in charge. She likes to be the one doing all the talking. That's why she didn't like that energy of Montavious. That's why she didn't like that energy because what Montavious was doing was he was, he had too much assertiveness. That's what she didn't like because she likes to be in charge. She likes to tell people what to do. And Montavious had too much male energy for her and she didn't like it. She didn't like his male energy because she wants to be the male. She was more going for this soft energy over here of, of, of who what was his name? Steve, that's his name. She was too much over here going for this soft energy of Steve. And let me tell you how bad it was the fact that she chose Steve over Montavious. Both of them, first of all, both of them maybe wasn't a good fit for her, period. But the fact that she told she chose Steve over Montavious told me a lot. One is she didn't like the energy of Montavious because she likes to be in charge. And Montavious was going to try to be in charge. He was going to try to speak up. He was going to try to be the leader. And she don't want no leader. So she went with the softer energy of Steve. Then let me find out. Let's go a little further deeper. So she chose the energy, the soft energy of Steve over the more assertive energy of Montavious. And it turns out uh, Steve over here darn near probably being alcoholic. And she used to dealing with an alcoholic daddy. So let, let me get this right, Ashley. You so much didn't like the, the strong energy of Montavious that you was willing to go with a man who can't hold his liquor, was drinking this much liquor, knowing the fact that you come from a background of an alcoholic father. And you told us that in the past, you've gone and dated two men that had substance abuse problems because you think it came from your daddy. But then here you are, have the choice between a strong energy man and an alcoholic who's guzzling and can't hold his liquor and you choose an alcoholic. Girl, girl, you need to get off this show. Go do some work. I know some people dropped down in my comments saying, Ashley look like she want to get with a Brent. Brent ain't going to want her. Brent is not going to want her. He don't want this energy. Brent is into a soft feminine woman with a big booty and Ashley ain't got none of that. She ain't got no big booty. And she ain't got no soft energy, so she could forget about that. Ashley is over here uh, sabotaging herself. Then she started going here bragging about the fact that, oh, I've been celibate for three years. And the reason why I've done it is because, um, you know what, I just I, I want to be more choosy, more picky. Ah, wrong answer. She shouldn't have said that. Women, stop telling men about how long you've been celibate. If you've been celibate for three, four, five years, uh, keep it to yourself. And if they ask you, lie. 
Okay, because a lot of men, they get scared of women who say they've been a celibate for three, four, five years. You know why they get nervous? Because they say, wow, that means you can go without sex. That means sex isn't important to you. And that means when you get in marriage, it won't be no big dot deal for you to withhold sex from me for a long time because you've already done it. Men don't want to hear that. Men do not want to hear from women who are virgins and who've been celibate for three, four, five, six, seven years. They don't want to hear it. Keep it to yourself. For whatever reason you're doing it, good for you. You're doing it to cleanse your soul. You're doing it to reclaim your virginity. You're doing it for whatever. Do it for yourself. That's fine. But when somebody asks you how long you've been doing it for, do not tell them three years. Because these men will walk away. Both Brent, both Brent, Steve, and Montavious was turned off by Ashley when she said she'd been celibate for three years. Don't nobody want to date no woman like that. <laughs> that means they know they ain't getting nothing. That means they know they're not getting nothing and they don't want to do, they don't want to be with you. Not at all. These are some tips, women. These are some tips. You know, men are tricky. They don't want no hoe out here in these streets. They don't want no woman that just had sex last night or last week or whatever else. But they don't want no woman that ain't had no sex in three, three years. Absolutely not. And they don't want no virgins. I don't know who's telling women out here that that sounds good in the dating world. It does not sound good. Do it for yourself, but keep your sexual history or whatever to yourself. You don't need to share it with people. And if they keep pressing you for an answer and they want you to tell them, tell them a lie. Tell them a lie. Do what this other girl did on, on the show. What was her name? Say something like, uh, the last time I had a boyfriend, my last boyfriend. Make up a boyfriend. If you ain't had no boyfriend in five years, six years, Say I was with a guy a year and a half ago and that, a year ago and that's the last time I had sex. I have sex within committed relationships. You can say that, but don't be talking about three years, please. That's scaring away any man. That will scare a man away. Telling a man you ain't had sex in three years or you're a virgin is like a man telling you as a woman, I ain't never loved no woman. That would scare you. If a man came up and told you, I never loved a woman or I haven't been in love for five, six, seven, eight years, you would get scared. That's the way men get scared when they hear women talking about I'm a virgin and I've been celibate for five, six, seven years. Women, stop it. Stop telling you come with a lie. Come up with a lie. But Ashley got this little arrogance to her. She has a bit of arrogance where she thinks nothing about her is wrong. So she's, all com she's comfortable saying these things about herself, not knowing that it really isn't a good quality. It really isn't a good quality. She talks about she's competitive. She thinks that's a good thing to say. And Montavia said over there, yeah, I know. That, he, was, he was telling her that's not a good quality in a woman. Men don't want to compete with women. They want to be your hero. <laughs> they, they don't want to be in competition with you. They want to be your hero. You up here baking a cake, talking about I want to win. You should win baking a cake. But they don't want to be in competition with you. Good Lord. Tammy, teach her. Tammy, teach this girl, please teach her. Montavious was over here talking about things like Kaizen and all this other kind of stuff. I know about that. He's a cybersecurity. He's a tech geek. I know I'm an engineer. I know about Kaizen and these things. These are things in his world. He was just trying to sound smart. He was just trying to impress her. She was just trying to sound intelligent. But instead of her knowing that's what he was doing, she automatically put him down. What he was really trying to do was he was trying to sound intelligent. He knew this girl was a chemist. He knew she was intelligent. He was trying to make her understand that, hey, I've got some intelligence to me. I can be intellectually stimulated. Maybe he went about it in the wrong way. But for her to eliminate him over that, a man putting forth his best effort versus a man over here like Steve, who's drinking like a sailor, getting drunk on the first date and then choosing him, even though you come from a history of an alcoholic father. She don't know how to choose men. Tammy, teacher. She don't know how to be feminine around men and she don't know how to choose men. She got some issues. She need to work on them. And instead of recognizing what Montavious was doing, she's over here talking about he's trying to hide something. Girl. So what you go for more is the drunk guy with all his truth serum telling everything why he's drunk versus over here Montavious saying you think he's trying to hide something because he wasn't telling you enough about himself. Ugh. Her picker is off. Her, her guts and everything is off about her. She reads men all wrong, all wrong. Probably because she thinks she the man. She thinks she the man and she thinks she read men. You ain't reading these men. She read Montavious all wrong. She's reading Steve all wrong. She's taking these men on dates, axe throwing and all this other kind of stuff. Stay in your feminine.
You don't need to be out here being no drill sergeant at no workout event with no man. Then she called Montavious fake deep. What's she talking about fake deep? That was ridiculous. She got some arrogance to her. She got some air. I can see a lot of men going out with her and being like, I don't want to deal with her. One is she's arrogant. She thinks she's all that. She thinks she's smarter. And she got all this male energy. There's a lot of men that won't go out with Ashley. She cute. She cute. She's smart. She intelligent. She's got a good career, I'm sure. She probably make a good living. Everything. She probably makes six figures. She definitely makes six figures or more. A lot of stuff. A lot. But all this other stuff over here, she get put in the friend zone. Friend zone. But when I saw her mama, no shade to her mama. I'm glad her mama did what she had to do. Her mama stepped up, took care of the family because the father was an alcoholic. Probably means he couldn't keep a job. Probably means a lot of things. And so her mother had to endure a lot, stay with that man and made it through and raised her daughter. But along the way, Ashley picked up some habits she don't need to carry forward. Her mama did what her mama had to do. So I'm not going to put her mama down, but I actually can see how she picked up all this a strong, feminine, independent energy that now she's carrying over to her dating life. But she thinks all the issues are with the men. Nah, Ashley, talk to Auntie Tammy. Tammy, get with her. Soften her up. Soften her up. If you can soften this girl up, if you can get this girl to not be giving instructions to people, sit down. Let me pour you some wine. Let me do this, do this, do that, and get her out of that. She'd be a good catch for some man. But can she be deprogrammed? If she wants, if she wants to be, she can. But right now, I think she got a tinge of arrogance with her where she believes she's not a problem. She thinks the problem is she's not meeting the right man. No, she's probably come across some good men and she scared them away. She scared those men away because listen to her on two episodes, I'd be scared. I would run away too. So we got a 43-year-old F boy and another bachelorette over here with all this male energy. <laughs> And people say they, she thinks she going to get with Brent. No, she ain't. Brent ain't going to have nothing to do with her. Not nothing to do with her. Not at all. She is not his type. Not one bit. But none of these men, none of those two men were probably for her anyway. They over here making rap songs about ass cheeks and I want to get with you for one night. It was a horrible rap. Just like Kirk Franklin said, horrible, doo-doo, trash. Both of them were trash, trash, trash. I'm not saying she should have chose Montavious. I don't think she should. But the fact that she had to pick one, she should have chose him over um, Steve. She absolutely should have chose him over Steve. Considering her history, she should have stayed as far away from Steve as possible. Because then she could have got Brent uh, Montavious. And then, of course, she would have chose him in the house. But she sure sh she didn't need that alcoholic energy. <laughs> not one bit. No, she didn't need that at all. I hope they give her some better choices going through. I think she's supposed to end up with six men in the house. We don't, She only got uh, two men now. So she's going to have some other men to choose. I hope she gets some better men to choose from uh, to take her to the house. But she's going to have a problem. She's going to be having a problem because I'm not even sure these men going to want to be with Ashley. Let's see. Let's see if any of these men even want to be with her. We already saw a preview of one man where he's busy looking at the other women that are there for Brent. And, he, and this man is looking at him. I'm telling you, it's probably going to happen that way. These men are not going to want to be with Ashley. She got a lot of positives, but she got a lot of negatives. A lot of them. Anyway, that's it, y'all. I'll talk to you later. Bye.